What up, y'all? It's Bubba Sedan Tam Ray Mello. You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Wednesday, December 11th, 2019. Delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R A Y M E L O. On Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainer Report, and it'll take you to the page. Kevin Hart and Nico Paris stepped out on the red carpet Monday. The 40-year-old actor and comedian Paris attended the Los Angeles premiere of Hart's movie Jumanji The Next Level at the TCL Chinese Theater. Hart wore a black suit with floor embroidery, while Paris sported a black crap pop and matching skirt. The couple got close as they posed for photos. Hart and Parrish married in August 2016 and have a two-year-old son together, Kenzo Cash. Hart is also parents to daughter Heaven and son Hendrix with ex-wife Tori Hart. Hart thanked Parrish and his kids at the People's Choice Awards in November for supporting him after his September car crash. Hart says, first and foremost, thank God because I definitely don't have to be here. Being that I am, it makes me more appreciative about life even more. It makes me appreciate the things that really matter, family. I want to thank my wife, my kids, who really stepped up to the plate for me. Dwayne Johnson, his wife Lauren Hashian, also attended the Jumanji Next Level premiere. Johnson wore a floral suit, while Hashian sported a red dress with the plunging neckline. Johnson told Entertainment Tonight he had the greatest time making Jumanji the next level with Hart and the rest of the cast and crew. Hart agreed. It's been unbelievable. At the end of the day, you're promoting something that you're proud of, that you're happy about, and we both understand how fortunate we are to be in this particular franchise. Jumanji The Next Level is a sequel to Jumanji Welcome to the Jungle 2017. The movies are a spiritual sequel to the 1985 film Jumanji starring Rob Williams. Jumanji The Next Level co-stars Jack Black, Karen Gillian, Nick Jonas, and Aquafina, and opens in theaters on Friday. The African American Film Critics Association announced on Tuesday their year-end award winners with Jordan Peele's Us earning Best Film. Peele also received Best Director, while Us star Lupita Nyong'o won Best Actress, and Eddie Murphy was named Best Actor for his role in Netflix's Dolmite Is My Name. Jamie Foxx earned the Best Supporting Actor for Just Mercy, and Divine Joy Randolph won Best Supporting Actress for Dolmite Is My Name. Best Breakout Performance went to Calvin Harrison Jr. for Waves. Obama won Best Animated Feature. The Black Godfather won Best Documentary. And Parasite won Best Foreign Film. The AAFCA consists of the world's largest group of black film critics. The awards will be presented on January 22nd at the Taglian Complex in Hollywood. Security Guard... Richard Jewell discovered a bomb at Centennial Park during the 1996 Olympics in Atlanta. Eric Rudolph finally pleaded guilty, along with three others, in 2005 to the bombing, but the FBI's first suspect was Jewell. The star of Richard Jewell helped to uh, hope the movie, directed by Clint Eastwood and starred Paul Walker Hauser, finally bring justice to the late Jewell, who died in 2007. Hauser told UPI, this film highlights someone who wasn't given a fair shake and was prejudged by their appearance and by some of their quirks and some of their mistakes. The hope is that we can all give each other some grace and give each other some opportunities because you don't want to judge a book by its cover. Kathy Bates plays Jewel's mom, Bobby Jewel, who is still alive and met with Bates before she filmed the movie. Bates says, What was most sad, I think, is that his vigilance saved hundreds of people, but people thought he was weird. They turned that vigilance into a weapon against them. I think that's the greatest tragedy for her. The film depicts Jewel going out of his way for better or worse. As a supply clerk for the U.S. Small uh, Business Administration 1986, he noticed Jay Watson Bryan, played by Sam Rockwell, liked Snickers. So Jewel stocked Bryan's desk with extra Snickers. Bryan eventually became his lawyer. As a campus security guard, Jewel went too far, entering students' rooms to search for drugs and alcohol, and pulling uh, suspected drunk drivers over the highway. Those who heard from the Jewel family learned even his missteps came from a good place. Bates says the only thing he ever wanted to do was help people. Even when he was a little kid at the church, he used to run around and make sure everybody had their programs. He was nine years old. 
Hauser learned that in his later career as a police officer, Jules still went above and beyond the call of duty. Hauser said he had teddy bears that he kept in glove compartments in his cop car. If a child was involved in a traffic accident or something even worse, he was always ready to try and distract an aided child who was on the scene of the crime. The film's portrayal of the bombing, when Jill discovered an unattended backpack, he follows protocol for a, suspic a suspicious package. In this case, his instincts were correct, and bomb squad experts discovered the explosion. Hauser said some of the extras in the scene were survivors of the Centennial Park bombing that killed one person and injured 111 others. Netflix says over 26 million of its members watched The Irishman in its first week on the streaming service. The company shared the figures Tuesday on Twitter after The Irishman debuted on Netflix on November 27th. The post reads, my friends, I've got some news from the big guy at the top. The Irishman was watched by 26,404,081 accounts globally within its first seven days of Netflix. Netflix chief content officer Ted Sarandos announced the news uh, Tuesday at the UPS Global TMC, uh, TMT uh, Conference. Sarandos predicted the Irishman will reach an audience of 40 million to households in the first 28 days. Twenty-six point uh, four million households equates about 16 percent of Netflix's account holders. Netflix account metric counts. If you're as someone who watched at least 70% of a film and doesn't count multiple viewers using the same account, the, th the numbers are not corroborated by a third party. Comparatively, the film Bird Box, starring Thunder Bullock, had 45 million viewers in its first week following um, its release on December 18, uh, December 2018. The Irishman is directed by Martin Scorsese and stars Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, and Joe Pesci. The film opened in theaters November 1st ahead of its Netflix. The movie is nominated for five awards at the 2020 Golden Globe Awards, including Best Drama. Timothy Chamolet talked up his new movie Little Women on The Tonight Show, stating that it is a must-see film. The actor told host Jimmy Fallon on Monday, I was saying it to my sister yesterday, I was like, man, if I have daughters one day, I want them to see it. And she was like, if you have sons, and it's true. He also continued, everyone should see this because it just gets at the pursuit of artistry, what it is to be human, what it is to be a girl and a woman back in the 1800s. But unfortunately, the prejudices that have held up today, held up today, and it's special. Chamolet also praises his co-stars, which include Sarosi Ronan, Emma Watson, Florence Pugh, and Eliza Scantlin. And he says, you see young women on screen, like Emma Watson um, included, they're acting like with a youthful abandonment. Little Women, written and directed by Greta Gerwig, is set to hit theaters on November. Uh, the film is based on... Uh, Louisa May Alcott's classic novel of the same name. Meryl Streep and Laura Dern also star. Chamolette noted that he would star in any film Gerwig makes, having already worked with the filmmaker Ronan in 2017's Lady Bird. The 23-year-old said he would even portray a chair or a tree if one of her films and demonstrates... The Bachelor alum Ashley Salter is going to be a mom of two. Salter's husband, Austin Brannon, confirmed in an Instagram post Monday that Salter is pregnant with their second child, a daughter. Salter and Brannon are already parents of three-year-old son, Brooks Hartman. Brannon shared a slideshow of photos of himself with Brooke at the Cove Atlantis Resort in the Bahamas. He captioned the post, Good Times with Brooks, and Absalt before our little girl comes in a couple of months. He captioned in the post. Salter had shown off her baby bump in a photo with Brandon and Brooks on Sunday. She wrote, Paradise with my loves at A.J. Brandon. Bachelor and Bachelor in Paradise alum Annalise P uh, Puccini were among those to congratulate Salter and Brandon in the comments. Puccini wrote, Congratulations, adding three heart emojis. Salter appeared as a contestant in Chris Souls' Seasons of The Bachelor. 
and later starred in Bachelor in Paradise Season 2. She and Brandon married in September 2016. Salter wrote in the couple's third wedding anniversary in September. Three years have flown by. At A.J. Brandon, you are my best friend, lover, and favorite adventurer. Thank you for con con uh, constantly supporting me, for giving me, loving me, making me laugh, and challenging me to become a better person. Happy anniversary. Bachelor in Paradise couple Kate Moore, uh, Katie Morton and Chris Bukowski have called it quits. Morton and Bukowski announced Tuesday on Instagram that they have called off their engagement. Morton wrote, one of the many lessons uh, this life has taught us is that it's okay to be stubborn in the pursuit of happiness. To fight for what's real and good, and that oftentimes the hardest thing and the right thing are the same. She says, we reach at a point in our story where we agree it's best to go our separate ways. We have chosen to love and respect each other as friends because that's the base of our relationship and it's what it's the most natural for us. More than thank family, friends, and, and fans for their support. She said, we are grateful for everything that we've learned in this chapter and we are hopeful for what is to come in life and in love for both of us. Bukowski shared the same message on his own account. Queen Son on Netflix's first African original series is coming in February. The streaming service shared a release date February 28th, poster and teaser for the new show Tuesday. The poster release on Twitter shows South African actress Pearl Thuzzi sitting on a throne. The caption reads, she is, hashtag Queen Sono, February 28th. The teaser shows Thuzzy walking up and taking a seat on the throne shown in the poster. She ends the teaser by giving a wink. Queen Sono is a crime drama set in South Africa. The series follows Queen Sono, a highly trained spy who must juggle dangerous missions with challenging relationships in her personal life. Queen Sono is created by South African actor, comedian, and director Kaksisgo Ladiga. The series co-stars Voodoo Dabula, Shahabi Morgel, Chi Men Hendi, uh, Luiso Mandinga, and Rob Van Buren. Netflix ordered Queen Sono to series in December 2018. Adiga said at the time, We're delighted to create this original series with Netflix and are super excited about their undeniable ability to take this homegrown South African story to a global audience. We believe Queen Sono will kick the door open for more awesome stories from this part of the world. Thussie is best known for playing Patricia Copong on the HBO BBC series The, no One, the Number One Ladies Detective Agency and Diana Mapassi in the ABC series Quantico. Brown announced on Tuesday that Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen has been renewed through 2021. The late night talk show, which first debuted in 2009, has aired live and featured Cohen asking his celebrity guest personal questions alongside fans who called into the show. Cohen, who also serves as the executive producer, will celebrate his show's 10 year anniversary in June. Um, recent guests who have appeared on the show include Julia Stiles, Celine Dion, Helena Bonham Carter, Kelly Rowland, and Alanis Morissette, among others. Cohen said in a statement, I keep waiting to stop having fun or run out of guests, stories, or booze, but the party rolls on, and I couldn't be more excited. Disenchantment Season 3 is coming to Netflix in 2020. Producers shared a teaser for the season on the show's official Twitter account Tuesday. The post reads, Don't Mess With Mommy, Disenchanted Part 3 coming in 2020. The promo shows Princess Bean, voiced by Abby Jacobson, being burned at the stake before falling through with Lucy, played by Eric Andre, and Alpha, played by Nat Faxon. The trio then encounter Bean's mom, Queen Dagmar, played by Sharon Horgan. Dagmar says, What? No hug? Disenchantment is created by The Simpsons creator Matt Goring. Season 1 debuted on Netflix in August 2018, while Season 2 was released in September. This enchantment takes place in the fictional medieval fantasy kingdom of Dreamland. The show also features the voices of Don, uh, John DiMaggio, Tress McNeil, Matt Berry, and David Herman. Netflix renewed Disenchantment through season four in October 2018. Goring said at the time, we're excited to continue this epic journey with Netflix. Stay tuned for more cranked up suspense, infuriating pot, plot twists, and beloved characters getting knocked off. For our first lady, Michelle Obama says she's so proud of her daughters and the compassionate, smart women they've become. The former first lady discussed Malala, 21, and Sasha, 18, their, her daughters with President Barack Obama during Tuesday's episode of Today. Obama spoke to Today host Jenna Bush Hager, the daughter of President George W. Bush, 
During a visit to Vietnam, Obama was in the country to support education for young girls and praised their daughters in the interview. Obama said of Malau and Sasha, so proud, so proud. They're compassionate, they're smart. They're everything that I see in the girls that are here in Vietnam and around the world. She added, that's one of the reasons I'm so passionate about girls' education because I see myself, I see my daughters in these girls. There's no different. Obama and her family dropped Sasha off at college for the first time in August. Obama recalled the emotional experience, saying there were tears during her last goodbye with her younger daughter. Obama says, we were really good about it. We didn't want to embarrass her because she had roommates. She shared, it was at the end after lunch when we got that final goodbye, when we got into the car, me, Barack, and Malala, uh, who was there with us, and then Sasha drove off on her own and said that last goodbye. Obama added, I'm so excited for my girls to grow up and to become independent, but it is. You feel a little melancholy that they will never be the little ones that sit on your lap and listen to your every word and look at you adoringly. Those days are over. Obama previously said on the Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend podcast in March that she is in awe of her daughter's resilience while growing up in the public eye. Obama shared a family photo with Barack Obama, Malia, and Sasha on Thanksgiving in November. She wrote, from our families to yours, Hashtag Happy Thanksgiving. Philip McCann, the former child actor best known for his role in the TV sitcom Alice, has died on Tuesday. He was 55. A spokesman, Jeff Ballard, said in a statement, We are all beyond heartbroken and devastated over Phil's passing. He has wonderful sense of humor, kindness, and loyalty will be remembered by all who crossed his path. McCann died Tuesday morning in Texas after a long battle, Ballard said. Entertainment Tonight also confirmed the actor's death. Though... Having some perform in small roles in some of the 1970s uh, classic shows such as Love Boat, Chips, and Fantasy Island, McCain is best known for playing Thomas Hyatt, the son of the titular character in Alice from 1976 to 1985. He also worked for 10 years at Los Angeles radio station KFWB News 98 before moving to Wimble, uh, Wimberley, Texas to be closer to his family. Now it says, adding from there, he hosted his own radio show. Survived by his mother Barbara and sister Nancy McKinnon, who is best known for playing Joe Polinsky on The Facts of Life. Cardi B appeared in Queens Court Tuesday for the 2018 alleged assault of two bartenders at a strip club. She told Entertainment Tonight she feels pretty good as she entered the courtroom. During the hearing, lawyers for both sides and the judge discussed the acquisition of private social media posts as evidence in the case. The judge said Cardi B's next court date for January 17th, which she will not attend. Cardi B is one of the three defendants accused of assault in an incident at an Angels uh, strip club last year. Prosecutors accused the singer and actor and nine associates of throwing a hookah, chairs, and champagne bottles at two bartenders, Jade and Batty G. One unidentified bartender said a drink landed on her face, causing injuries including blindness, itching, and burning. Jade was allegedly involved with Cardi B's husband, Offset. In June, Cardi B pleaded not guilty to 12 counts, including two felony assault charges. She rejected a deal to plead guilty to misdemeanor charges. The court required her to appear Tuesday for a follow-up hearing. Marie Claire reported that Cardi B's ensemble included a black coat adorned with feathers that extended into a train that E.T. estimate was between 12 feet to, uh, 10 feet to 12 feet long. She wore the coat over a white shirt and tied black pants and spiked black heels. Usher and Cheryl Crow are set to perform during the New Orleans section of ABC's Dick Clark's New Year's Rock and E with Ryan Seacrest. The singers will be performing from the All-Star Fan Fest stage. Billy Porter will be hosting the New Orleans part of the telecast, while Sierra will host the West Coast celebration. Seacrest will be hosting alongside Lucy Hale from the New Year's Eve countdown from New York City's Times Square. Dua Lipa, Green Day, Paul Abdul, Salt and Pepper, Megan Thee the Stallion, Dan Pache, Chelsea Bellarini, Michael Brown, Anthony Ramos, uh, Shade, and Ava Max will be performing as part of the West Coast Bash, along with Sierra, who will be taking the stage for her new song, Malina. Uh Performers from New York City will be announced at a later date. Dick Clark's New Year's Rock and E with Ryan Seacrest will be aired live starting December 31st at 8 p.m. on ABC. Netflix is adapting Paul McCartney's children's book, High in the Clouds, as a new animated film. The streaming service announced in the press release Tuesday that it is teamed with Gaumont to produce a feature film based on the novel by McCartney, Jeff Dumbard, and Phil Agra. McCartney will produce and create original songs and music for the film. 
Bob Shea, the late Michael Lynn, um, Sedonis Dumas, Christopher Randy, N Nicholas Entland, and Terry Callaghan served as co-producers. John Crooker wrote the screenplay with Timothy Record, who's serving as director. McCartney says, we've always been, uh, we're thrilled to be partnering with Netflix. I've always loved animated films, and this is a hugely important passion project for me. Can't wait for the world to see it. High in the Clouds Falls Rural, an imaginative teenage squirrel. The character finds himself pulled into a ramshack gang of teenage rebels who live in the clouds after he accidentally antagonizes the gang's leader, Crash the Owl. Um, Netflix's director of original animated films, Greg Taylor, said, bringing the world a new animated film from the heart and mind of the brilliant Paul McCartney is undoubtedly one of the greatest thrills we've experienced at Netflix. We're beyond grateful to be partnering with Nicholas and the Galmon team on High in the Clouds and with Tim at, at the helm. This whimsical story celebrates individuality and a unifying power of music in its great hands. Carney published High in the Clouds in 2005. The former Beatle released his second children's book, Hey Grand Dude, in September. And that is your entertainment report for Wednesday, December 11, 2019. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello, that's R A Y M E L O, on Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainer Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainer Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainer Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.